Wild dogs is a generic term for any canis species in Australia. So it, that includes things like uh, pure dingoes, domestic dogs, and feral domestic dogs and hybrids between the two. Dingoes arrived in Australia uh, a few thousand years ago, probably about 5,000 years ago, about 200 years ago. Uh, Europeans bring domestic dogs with them, which are dingoes' cousins. And after being reunited after 5,000 years, uh, they join forces again and hybridise uh, readily. Now that uh, dingoes and wild dogs and uh, domestic dogs are back together again, there's probably more wild dogs now than at any other time in Australia's ecological history. And dogs have been able to do that because of the changes brought about since European occupation, like increased water uh, resources and food resources. So there's no shortage of wild dogs in Australia. Wild dogs currently occupy about 85% of Australia. They're naturally increasing in the remaining 15% of Australia. The proportion of pure dingoes is decreasing in that, and the proportion of hybrid wild dogs is increasing in those spaces. Because wild dogs occupy almost all of the continent, they live in a wide variety of habitats, from central Australian deserts where they hardly get water, right through to the top of the alpine areas where they're under two feet of snow through the winter. So it's not unusual for wild dogs to be the pure sandy looking animal with white socks, or just jet black, or white, or patchy or striped. In general, wild dogs will eat whatever's available to them where they live. So in, up, in arid central parts of the country, it'll be rabbits and kangaroos and mice and rats. Um, up and down the east coast of Australia, bandicoots and little wallabies are their number one preferred prey source. Wild dog uh, movements typically range from five or 10 kilometres a day through to about 25 kilometres a day. Most often those movements are round and round their home range or their territory. But if they straighten up and they want to go in a particular direction, Wild dogs have been known to move 500 kilometres in a month, or 1,300 kilometres in four months. When we're dealing with that sort of movement across the landscape, it's very difficult to manage wild dogs or consider them to be uh, tied to one particular patch. Uh, wild dogs form packs, usually. They don't need to be in packs, but they often form social groups and packs. Uh, they have a dominant male and a dominant female, but they're very promiscuous. So what happens in practice is that most uh, bitches will breed and have pups uh, every year if they're sexually uh, mature, uh, but not all of those litters survive. So usually one or two litters out of a particular group will survive and go on to the next year. Wild dog breeding rate is what we call pretty high. Nevertheless, there's about two thirds of wild dogs will die before their first or second birthday, which is a pretty high turnover. Wild dogs typically breed once a year. The environmental constraints that are operating on wild dogs living out in the bush typically force them into annual breeding cycles. And those breeding cycles have a very predictable annual uh, peak and trough. In um, March, April, they're finding boyfriends and girlfriends, getting together. They're back in a hotel room come June. Come July, pups are out on the ground and parents are busily resourcing those pups and trying to feed them till they leave home at sort of October, November time. And over the summer, they disperse and find other places to live. And that annual cycle is found all across Australia. When wild dogs breed and uh, have uh, a litter of pups, litters sizes vary between sort of two or three up to about 11. Most of the time, they're sort of in the four, five or six mark. As you can imagine, if you're a wild dog living out in the bush, it can be very difficult to raise a family of 10 or 11. So litter sizes usually average around that four or five uh, mark. Wild dogs are a pervasive predator. They will kill and injure livestock such as uh, sheep, cattle, calves, um, other various livestock. Uh, domestic pets are a big one, so wild dogs will often um, injure or kill uh, domestic dogs. Um, and obviously these things can cause an economic cost to uh, producers and to owners, but also it's very upsetting and very stressful to see your, um, your stock or your pet injured. So there's some big costs there, and in some circumstances they will um, approach or attack people. This is quite rare, but this can be quite upsetting of course, and can actually stop people using certain areas of the landscape due to, due to fear of being attacked, especially to their children. So wild dogs can carry a range of diseases and pathogens that can be transferred to people or to wildlife or livestock. Um, a common one is um, a which is the hydatid tapeworm. 
So our research has shown about 50% of dogs in southern Queensland actually carry a Chironococcus. Um, that can be transferred to livestock or to people and it can have um, serious um, health implications on organ failure and even result in death. Other parasites include uh, Toxicara and Spirometra, um, which are, again, they can be transferred to, to livestock and to people and have sort of health implications of that. So while dogs in, are, they are in the environment, they are carrying these things, we need to make sure we protect ourselves from exposure to dogs, as in handling dogs or carcasses of dogs, and also uh, dog um, faeces as well. So if you are in areas where there are dogs, you have handled dogs, please wash your hands, be totally safe in that regard, wash them thoroughly. So from an ecological point of view, wild dogs need to be managed where they're having an impact on our native species. So wild dogs are a major predator and the extra predation caused by wild dogs on our native species can be enough to basically push them over the edge. Wild dogs and dingoes are probably one of the most studied wildlife species in Australia and have been for a number of years, pretty much because of their well-known impacts on livestock. Although much of the research has occurred in rural areas or agricultural areas where these uh, impacts are a real big problem, recently there's been a fair bit of interest in uh, the occurrence of wild dogs and their impacts in areas around human habitation, particularly up the east coast of Australia. Everywhere from Cairns to Melbourne has wild dogs in the outer suburbs and even some of the inner suburbs. If there's a patch of bush big enough to have things like koalas and possums and little macropods and things like that, little kangaroos living there, then pretty good chance there's going to be wild dogs in those areas. What we've learned uh, and what people have discovered from studying wild dogs in these places over the last few years is that their home range sizes, their territory sizes, are a little bit smaller, in some cases a lot smaller than their rural counterparts. They don't need to travel as far to get a feed. So they can live quite comfortably in a couple of hectares or maybe one kilometre by one kilometre or that little crack of bush between the highway and the suburb. Uh, wild dogs can live and exploit those areas really well. In the, all the movement studies we've done, where we put collars on dogs and let them go and see where they move, in all cases, wild dogs are living within 500 metres to 1,000 metres of houses at all times. They're basically living right under our feet. I think one of the reasons why people don't recognise that dingoes and wild dogs live right next door uh, to them in the suburbs is because of the variety of colours that they come in. We'll often see a dog or wild dog run past and just assume it's somebody's pet that uh, has jumped the fence, when in reality that's part of a pack of wild dogs that's been living there forever. So I find it very interesting that uh, wild dogs can be quite adaptable to an uh, urban situation and do quite well in the presence of humans.